Good morning. Uh, you may have guessed that uh, I've got some kayak projects that I need to work on. I don't know exactly how in depth or how involved I'm gonna make it on the video, but basically I'm gonna turn this in my cart into a, well, I'm gonna use the cord and make it so that the I don't have to flip it on its side anymore. I fish a lot of areas with uh, with oysters and the boat ramps around here are covered in oysters. And when I pull it out of the water, I've really scut the snot out of the thing. And it doesn't really bother me too bad because this is a tool and it's not gonna be perfect forever. And it hasn't affected the air, hydrodynamics or anything in the kayak or anything. But I did, would like to stop doing that. And it would also make it easier if I didn't have to flip everything I own out in the water when I turn it on its side at the boat ramp or empty the kayak to flip it on its side to stick the wheels in those scupper holes in the back. Um, you know, lay it over, stuff it in, and then toss it down on the wheels. It puts a lot of torque on that. It puts a lot of torque on the scupper holes and I just don't feel that it's as necessary to do it that way. So here's the plan. And like everything in life, it may not go exactly as planned. That's another project. Um, the idea here is I was just going to use these. Turns out I only have one of these. But I did have two of those, okay? Long and short of it is, I'm gonna take a drill, hold these in a pair of pliers, take a drill, punch a hole through them, and feed the rope through these holes and tie the rope around the bolt or whatever. And I'll be removing these right here and threading those two things into these. And then basically the idea would be to have enough of the rope attached to this that when I yank them out in the water, I can still, still get them out from under the kayak and up on the back and secure them. And then pull it tight enough and secure enough, maybe uh, tie the access around here so that at the end of the day, when I'm done kayaking, fishing, whatever, I can just and stay in, in the water instead of being you know, hostage by uh, the boaters and jet skiers, be able to just flip those off in the water. The line will be going from here through there. I'll just grab that line and pull it and I'll pull the wheels around and up into the scuppers. And then I'll just tie that rope off here get the thing out of the water, get it up to the trailer, and throw it up on the trailer, drop the wheels, put them back here where I store them for uh, travel, and tie the ropes off. So there's actually gonna be two links of the rope. One will be connected here in a long loop, and the other one will be tied here. And this is the, the rope that's tied here. Well, um, when the wheels are in, it'll be tied off here. I'm sorry, here, and I'll just untie it and pull it, and that'll pull the wheels out of the scuppers and drag it under the boat in the water, throw them up there and tie it off. So, let's see how this works. Okay, so, I cut the rope, there's a lot of rope there, and heated it with the torch to uh, keep it from fraying, and I may have made it a little bit long. Um, but I can take that up in the final mix. Uh, this, it will rest under the kayak like this when it's uh, in the water. And I'll have to make sure and keep it tied very securely 
so it doesn't interfere with the operation of the rudder or the skeg. I don't know if you saw that. So uh, that is a concern. I don't want it twisting around and not functioning properly. That's actually the skeg. I said, I said rudder and skeg. Rudder and skeg. And I don't want it to interfere with that. So I uh, just have to make sure that it's uh, pulled as excess out of the way as possible. When the uh, wheels are not in and I'm in the water, that's what that should look like. It's just there. And the wheels will be up here as they are now except for those two ropes two pieces will be attached to the ends of those let me uh, cut back in when i'm a little further along okay i have uh, ran into my first snag and something unforeseen i really just didn't think about it when i bought the kayak i went out and bought the best that i could buy Hobie brand, the most useful. And that's one of the things that I really, really, that's like a article of faith is usability, uh, compactness, uh, stowability. So that being said, I just realized that I'm going to have to alter this plan significantly, okay? Um, the reason being is this is a collapsible set and I had forgotten that that's what I bought and these caps are on a bungee and there's the bungee cord sticking out and it's in, into the cap and then of course this one is the same thing. This actually flips over and locks when it's in the inside the kayak to keep it from falling out when you uh, pick it up or do whatever it'll or put the wheels in on the trailer. It keeps the wheels from dropping out and making you say mean things to people or bad words out loud. So the long and the short of it is, this was designed to be collapsible and I'll show you what that means. Sorry, I'm trying to get this to go back in place. Uh, you just kind of pull this and put it that way. It's kind of difficult to do this one-handed. Well, this, this leg also pulls out and lays sideways. So you do it that way. This one, you pull out. So you can see that one's out. And you cross them, okay? And then you pull this little red pin here and it releases the lock on the wheels and the wheels come off and you've just got this flat thing, wrap this bungee cord here around the thing and you throw it in your hatch. Uh, there was a time that it was very difficult to get these wheels to stay locked on this axle. And I'd actually called Hobie and said, hey, this, uh, kind of a shoddy design here and they explained to me the reason that, that would happen is if there was seaweed sand shells whatever in inside that hub and that that would keep it from locking down so to, it was to the point where I couldn't there were several times I didn't know how I was going to get it off the boat dock onto the trailer without bringing the trailer all the way down to it and because the wheels wouldn't stay on and after smacking the crap out of them on the side, uh, we'd finally get them to stay on and I could drag it up out of the water until they told me that. So instead of having to deal with that and having to fish and rinse sand and seashells and poo poo caca out of those hubs, I just left them locked on and I don't stow them. They just stay on the kayak assembled. So what I'm gonna attempt to do I think the thing that's the smartest would be to heat up something and put a little entry point here and here so that I can slide the rope in and have it come all the way out here, drill a hole in it here, 
and there and so that the rope is actually secured all the way through the tube. Leave it as collapsible, um, but have the rope secured here and going up through these pipes because the point of the, this has got to be the first thing that enters the kayak. I couldn't secure it down here because this could be anywhere, okay? There's no way to keep it upright and going into the scuppers. It's got to be this point. This has got to be the first thing that comes in contact with it. So um, I may even decide to put it over here to keep this ball from flipping over and keeping it from going in. Because that's the other thing I'm concerned about is when I start pulling it in, if that goes like that, it will not go inside the scupper. So I'd have to figure out a way to keep that from sliding over and in the way and making it too big to go through. So I may just uh, put a, maybe a drill, heat up a drill and push it through there and through here, but skillfully, I say that bated breath, sorry. Well, I just don't wanna hit that knotted uh, elastic cord and cut it in any way, mess with that assembly at all. So I'll get back to you. Okay, this was an attempt to see if I could get this wire if there was enough diameter in that scupper to allow this to pass through like this and then I was just going to wire tie it down not here because I don't want the kayak resting on that it's got to rest on this so it's got to be on this side sorry on this side of this I don't want the kayak resting on the wire tie right there and rubbing a hole in it it's a lot of weight to be pushed on the kayak in that spot right there and it'd rip a hole in the kayak. So that's a no-go here. This isn't so much, but it's still too fat to go through that scupper. And I can't have it sitting in there wearing holes in the scupper either. So any external method is not gonna work. It's gonna have to come through the end. So let me, I mean, I would prefer to have it go all the way through to here, but I just, just don't know how I'm going to fish it all the way down through here. So, more to come. Okay, after several trips to the hardware store, I went and hopefully used the right length. I decided that I would much rather sacrifice a $200 set of wheels, collapsible wheels, and still have them collapsible but not elastic, than to continue tearing up the side of a $5,000 kayak. So I guess, uh, what's his name? Lennon was right. You know, sometimes you gotta crack a few eggs to make an omelet. You guys are the eggs. Okay, I wanted to do a recap on this project that I had going. Um, basically, this is exactly how it's gonna be stowed. I, it, how it is stowed. Um, I use a bungee cord to keep tension on this cable so it's not loosening up and flipping in the breeze when I drive down the street with it. And, you know, wrap the this bungee cord, hook it, pull it up, tie it onto here. And uh, I just wanted a quick little demonstration to show uh, how it works. And I mean, it's not rocket scientists. You've probably seen seven billion people do this exact same deal. It's not like I've uh, invented anything new and earth-shaking. Let me get this laid down on the floor and uh, I'll show you how it works. It's This would be like at the uh, boat ramp or whatever or in the water. Uh, be setting out in the water. These float and it's kind of simple. The process is you know insanely simple you just come up alongside it and um, sorry 
grab a hold of the rope. And it's a lot easier when you actually are gonna do it than what I'm doing because Oh, it ain't, it's not gonna work because I gotta loosen up the straps and pull the boat back a little bit Hold after on. wrestling it back on the trailer. Um, like I said, you just pull them up. They go up inside as designed. And then Either, I would either tie it off on that stub where the light's at or off of that post or just tie it off of the rail or bungee cord it or whatever. And it will uh, stay right up in there. So when you drag it off the cart or off the trailer, the wheels stay in, um, drag it out of the water. It's not really that big of a deal because, because those wheels are buoyant, they'll push themselves up and it's not that great big of a hairy deal. Now, when you let the thing down, let's uh, just kind of imagine that this is being held in place. I would simply take and grab a hold of those that rope right there and pull on it in the water, and it'll pull them out uh, from under the boat and drag it back up around here and seat it. So that is the entire process right there. Uh, one to pull it out and stow it, and the other one to pull, you know, after you toss it in the water, you pull this backwards and it puts it right up into the scuppers. No muss, no fuss, easy peasy. So thanks for watching, and uh, if you have some modifications that you've done to your wheels, Oh, the other thing, these are still collapsible, okay? What I did is I went and bought some clevis pins. Might as well pull this back and show you. Because they were, uh, I'm gonna have to super put some contact cement or something on that to keep it down in there. Um, because these are collapsible, and I wanted to be able at some point maybe decide to keep them collapsible, what I did is I just drilled a hole all the way through them and put clevis pins in them. Uh, but now for the life of me, I don't know what I did with. So in any case, um, I'll probably wind up just putting a bolt to them, a stainless steel bolt here and here. All right. Thanks for watching. And if this was at least a little bit informative for you, please give me a thumbs up and uh, maybe consider subscribing. Have a good one. Bye.